Have you ever heard of Planescape Torment? For many years, I've heard it's one of the absolute best CRPGs or even role-playing games ever made. It was released for PC in 1999 by Black Isle Studios, notable for other titles in the genre such as Fallout 1 and 2, or perhaps even the more notable Baldur's Gate series. Planescape Torment focuses heavily on story and dialogue, much rather than combat. This idea really drew my attention since when I've tried games in the CRPG genre in the past, especially the older titles, the combat has been clunky to say the least. It's just too complicated and overwhelming unless you know Dungeons and Dragons rule or some crap. Let's just say it's not easily accessible for a player who just wants to jump in. Before moving on to the actual game, note that this is not by any means a review series, only me giving the game a fair chance to catch my attention and then presenting my initial impressions. If you're like me and value your time and or have a deteriorating and pitiful attention span, this series will try and determine if the game in question may be worth playing despite those shortcomings. So how long have I been playing Planescape Torment? Well, I clocked in at around 3 hours, but to get ahead of myself, I will be playing this a lot more in the future, so let's quickly jump in. After installing a few mods to give the game higher resolution and addressing some bugs, I was, upon pressing start, instantly presented with a very classic stat screen. This is a common thing in CRPGs and basically requires you to come in with some knowledge since this dictates your character quite a lot. I would very much recommend using a guide at this stage. But then, we are presented with a protagonist, called the Nameless One, who wakes up in what looks like Jigsaw's bedroom. A floating skull floats up to you and starts talking, and it turns out you have a lazy thought a plot, ah, I mean amnesia, and is completely oblivious to who or where you are. And here you see what the game consists the absolute most of, dialogue. And it's smart, funny, brilliant, and even thought-provoking at times. And I have no problem saying it's one of the most compelling written material I have ever seen in a game. But if you don't like talking in games, this is definitely not for you. Moving on, it turns out you've been brought to a place which basically sends people to the next world. You and the skull, called Mort, Morty, wants to escape this place. And after killing a zombie, you find a key to get out of the first room. But interestingly enough, you find out that the zombies themselves actually don't attack you. In fact, you can walk up and talk to more or less every single one of them. The game encourages you to talk to everyone and everything, and it seems it's almost always the way to go rather than killing stuff. And soon, you meet an old guy called Dahl, and you're presented with even more information on who you are, what this place is, who operates here, and even more than that. It's encouraged to check out and read every single branch of dialogue possible with any characters, since it might gain you XP and add story to your journal. I absolutely love this aspect since I was so intrigued by the world, and I spent 10 minutes at least talking to him. In the next room you find an NPC that gives you your first quest. As it's your first, it's <laughs> at least on paper a basic and boring fetch quest, but it teaches you how the game works. To find the items, you not only need to explore, but you need to talk your way to get items. While exploring the area, I found that the game taught me about itself in, at least for me, a very compelling manner. You find a lot of little notes and journals lying around, giving you hints. For example, I found a locked chest and I couldn't seem to find a key. I found an internal message saying that the crowbar that's used to open locks were misplaced somewhere and realized I've looted this some time ago. Finding that out made me feel smart, and there's a lot more of those elements to be found in the game. And by the way, does the game not look gorgeous? The visuals are so intriguing and beautiful and gives the game such a daunting and unique atmosphere, complemented by equally striking sound design and music. I guess I'm getting a bit off topic, but I realize that I don't want to spoil the game and how it behaves fully, since it's such a treat to find out everything yourself. But, minor spoiler, I played until you get out of the first area and what seems to be like a small village or a town. 
As I said, it took me almost three hours, but I read every single piece of dialogue and did quite some quick saving and dying, after choosing some ill-fated dialogue options. This is also by the guides I've read, encouraged and saving before basically every conversation is a big plus. As for the combat, I don't mind it at all. I haven't really come to any advanced spell casting or such yet, but it seems relatively straightforward. Since the amazing dialogue and story absolutely steals the show, I'm not really compelled to go more in-depth than that. So, to wrap it up, what are my final conclusions? Well, it seems incredible. I was kind of afraid the hype would get to me, but especially the great writing and the amazing atmosphere won me over very fast. There is no chance I will not continue playing this in the future. And as every time it happens, I'm so excited to be blown away by a good game. It looks hard to get into at first, I know, but stick to it, scroll through a guide or something, and I can almost promise you it will win you over as well.